Hello everyone, welcome back to Cool Guy Industry. Uh, today I'm going to be installing uh, Windows 10 on Linux through a virtual machine. A little bit of pre-setup. Uh, I'm using Pop! OS, but you can use any Ubuntu based uh, Linux distribution of your choice. The uh, instructions are pretty much the same for all Linux distributions. Um, Pre-setup would be going into the BIOS. You should always uh, check the BIOS first for something called virtualization or something like that. Uh, it's different between Intel and AMD. So you'd have to check your BIOS settings before trying this. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is go into the Pop Shop or you can go into Ubuntu software for most Ubuntu distributions. And I look up Ubuntu boxes or not Ubuntu, it's GNOME Boxes. GNOME Boxes is a great application for running a virtual machine inside of Linux. You can run many different Linux distributions or like I'm going to do today, running Windows 10. I prefer to use the Ubuntu Deb package instead of uh, using a flat pack because I don't have very much internet bandwidth to use as you'll probably see here in a moment. <laughs> yeah, see, it's 11.7 uh, megabytes. Much smaller than the flat, flat pack. Here we go. I'm gonna give it authorization. And yeah. I'll go ahead and let this download go for a while, and I'll speed up the video for you. Alright, so I underestimated the internet speed here a little bit, and turns out that the Wi-Fi totally cut off during the installation, so you gotta be careful about that. I'm just gonna install again. The download should have left where it went off. Speed this back up for you. Alright, so I can go ahead and open this, and as you can see, we got the little previews here, you got Express Installation, which I will be using for Windows here, and they show that you can download. Drag and drop is a feature I haven't been able to get to work on my machine, uh, I'm not sure if I'm just not doing it right, but they have that feature as well. Yeah, we're going to hit plus and click Create a Virtual Machine, and then we're going to go down to system image file. Now what we're going to do is we're going to download a uh, win Windows system file that uh, we got from Microsoft's website here. I'll leave the link in the description for this. Create my virtual machine and select system image file. I drop mine in the music folder where I will use my username. I will go ahead and name that cool guy. Add a super secure password. Be super simple. Usually it just signs you in automatically. Now here is a way to find the product key on a laptop or something that has a UEFI. I have a really old computer, so mine says no such directory, but uh, that's where your Windows product key would show up. Mine is on the outside of my computer, which I type in here. I recommend uh, verifying Windows with your product key, so you can go back to your installation anytime you use it. Go ahead and hit express install. Going to look at our resources. Yeah, two gigs of RAM. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to change that. And 
Look. Customize. Yeah, I'm, I recommend giving Windows at least four gigs of RAM to work with. That way, uh, things can run smoothly. I don't think things are going to run very smoothly on mine because I'm using a integrated screen recorder, which is using quite a bit of uh, resources. So Windows probably won't run very well on my computer. And so the installation will begin. I'm going to speed this up quite a bit for y'all. So I go ahead and click the Windows system that showed up after it was finished installing. And then it's going to go ahead and try to sign me in, but then it's going to go to another window. We're going to get all, everything set up for us. Okay, and I'll speed this up so we don't wait too long. Make sure everything is ready to go. <laughs> Taking a bit longer than expected. Almost there. All right, so now we're up and at the desktop, so that's good. The first thing I do is uh, I right-click to bring up my display settings because uh, right now, as you can see, it's just a box with black bars and stuff. Display settings and change it to my monitor's resolution, which is... I believe 1900 by 600 and as you can see Windows is really skittish on my system that's because I'm recording in Linux which is using quite a bit of resources the CPU resources we'll get there someday looks like we're a little frozen here Alright, there we go. We uh, get uh, 1600 by 900. Yep. There it is. Yeah. That sound. <laughs> there we go. 1600 by 900. I'm going to go ahead and keep these changes. And that's about it. You have a full running Windows desktop. The next step that I usually take is debloating it, as you see in this image here. I debloat Windows and I'll make a new video on how to do that later, coming soon. Thanks everyone for watching, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe.